following forced merriment season with MAGFest was a great idea, in every respect save for my physical well-being. Bob is beat to hell, kids. No two ways about it. So let's dig back into the junk drawer and see what random morsels of insight can be discovered. So, who are these people who call the Wolf of Wall Street immoral because it doesn't bend over backwards to make the guy's life of boundless hedonism look gross and unpleasant enough? Folks, real talk. The dude roughs up his wife, abuses his employees, swindles his clients, and nearly gets himself and his family members killed due to his own recklessness multiple times. If you don't think just depicting that makes him suitably evil-looking, it ain't Martin Scorsese who's a twisted sicko. It's you. And while I'm at it, who are these people sending in FCC complaints about two broke girls? Yeah, did you see this? Apparently there's a huge number of morally outraged letters being written to the producers of that terrible show that always looks like the first act of an above-average porno that never gets going. Now I get that some people are prudish and actually will get offended by what passes for sexy humor on freaking CBS, but if you're that easily tweaked about such stuff, why are you watching a sitcom whose sole foundational running joke is, these two women aren't doing it, yet, in the first place? Remember Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers? Did you know that originally that was supposed to be a modern update of The Rescuers? Yeah, but then they decided to just do a sequel to that instead, and they needed to come up with new characters, and eventually got around to asking, hey, do you think enough people still care about those two chipmunks who used to screw with Donald? While I'm on the subject, check this out. Chippendale's new 90s outfits were obvious pop references to Indiana Jones and Magnum P.I., right? Okay, you know who the first actor was they asked to be Indiana Jones before Harrison Ford? Tom Selleck. For real, you can look that up. Uh, so they made a live-action movie out of Kite? Okay, how does it look? Take that to the Emir. Alright then. <laughs> so Brian Griffin came back to life, huh? Or rather, the time stream was altered so that he'd never died in the first place. That happened. Still, I think the gag might have worked out better if there had actually been more than one standalone episode between the death and resurrection to keep up the Are They Serious hype, but I get its function as a Thanksgiving to Christmas mini-arc event. And it did do the trick of making Family Guy legitimately topical for the first time in forever. And it was kind of strange to see how many people were genuinely upset about it at first. People actually gave a damn about the fate of a Family Guy character, even though the makers of Family Guy have done everything in their power to make all of their characters, to one degree or another, mean-spirited caricatures that no one should give a damn about. Oh, and hey, that means Brian will be around for the big crossover episode Simpsons Guy, which is apparently being set up to be the premiere of the next season. Dan Castellaneta, Julie Kavner, Yardley Smith, and Nancy Cartwright are all confirmed participants, but not Harry Shearer, which unfortunately would seem to rule out any appearances by Mr. Burns or Smithers. On the other hand, Hank Azaria is signed up, which at least means I might get to see Mo Sislak serve Brian Griffin a drink, and that would be pretty cool. Israeli actress and model Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman in Batman vs. Superman, aka the sequel to Man of Steel, aka Man of Steel 2, sorry about Man of Steel 1. Also rumored, I stress rumored to show up in some way, Lex Luthor, Nightwing, The Flash, and Green Lantern. Probably the black one, because that's the easiest way to make everyone understand that this has nothing to do with that Ryan Reynolds abomination. Denzel Washington and Jason Momoa are both said to be sought by the studio, but no one knows who they want them to play. Also presumably on hand? Superman. Maybe. I mean, you know, if they can fit him in the movie somewhere. Speaking of which, The Rock apparently took a meeting about a DC Comics movie, but he's not saying which one or in what context. You know what? I think he should be Lex Luthor. No, I'm not kidding. I think that would be a great idea. And not only because it would be attention getting what the f*** casting, the likes of which we haven't seen since Heath Ledger as Joker. Look, let me explain. Since we already saw all that LexCorp stuff in the first movie, it's pretty clear that we're getting a post-80s evil businessman Luther, and not the much more interesting Golden Silver Age evil super scientist Luther. Ugh, fine, fine, whatever. Here's the thing. Business Lex's relationship with Superman has always been partly about jealousy and resentment. Evil methodology or not, Lex is a guy who feels his hard work, criminal or otherwise, in achieving what he has is the key to why he not only has power, but deserves to have power. And the appearance of 
of a godlike being who's more powerful than Lex could ever hope to become simply by the fact of his existence bugs him on a fundamental level. Well, what if this Lex Luthor was, in addition to being a genius, also a jacked-up fitness nut, a guy who prides himself on being some kind of idealized pinnacle of human achievement, as strong as he is smart, and then all of a sudden strength is just one more thing about him that's no longer impressive next to Superman? That could be interesting, and give some context to Luthor eventually wanting to put on some version of that famous George Perez power armor, which, by the way, I'd bet money they end up doing regardless of who the actor turns out to be because it's really the only way for Lex and Superman to punch each other, and thus far, this series seems to regard endless sequences of super-punching as the only reason to make a Superman movie. Next week, something that can fill a whole episode. I hope. I'm Bob, and that's The Big Picture. <laughs>